Good morning, and welcome veterans, staff, students, and community members to the Sisters High School Veterans Day Assembly. My name is Jack Turpin. And I'm Ella Eby. We would like to start by reminding you to please have respect for those around you and our veterans today by silencing your cell phones and remaining quiet for the rest of our program. Ella and I are honored to host the Veterans Day Assembly this morning. Today is a day of recognition for all those who have served our country. It is because of the many sacrifices that they have made that we all enjoy our freedom. So to the veterans who are gathered here today, we would like to give you a warm welcome and thank you for all that you have done. And now we would like to welcome the posting colors. At this time, please stand and remove your hats for the Pledge of Allegiance. Afterwards, please remain standing as the Sisters High School Choir sings the National Anthem. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Thank you, Mr. Johnson and Jazz Choir. Now we'll hear the song Taps, performed by Kennel Giddy. Today, today, the 35 mournful notes making up taps are played to commemorate the memory of members of all five branches of the armed forces. Thank you, Kendall. We would now like to invite our own Sisters High School Band and Choir to the stage. The choir is led by their director, Mr. Johnson, and they are also accompanied by Julie Cash. The band is led by Kayla Golka, and they will be performing the Armed Forces Salute. During this song, each branch of the military will be mentioned, and we invite veterans to stand up when they hear their branch so they can be recognized for their service.
Thank you, choir. And now a slideshow presented by ASG in leadership about veterans and people currently serving who have graduated from our very own Sisters High School.
now we have our missing man table. It's five. Thank you. Please note the special table. It is reserved to honor our missing men and women. Set for one, the empty chair represents Americans. Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, Coast Guard, and civilians who are all with us in spirit. Americans should never forget the brave men and women who answered the nation's call and served the cause of freedom. The table is round to show our everlasting concern. The tablecloth is white, symbolizing the purity of their motives when answering the call to serve. The single red rose reminds us of the lives of these Americans and their loved ones and friends who kept the faith while seeking answers. The yellow ribbon symbolizes our continuing uncertainty, the hope for their return, and our determination to account for them. A slice of lemon reminds us of their bitter fate and captured, captured and missing in a foreign land. A pinch of salt symbolizes the tears of our missing and their families who long for answers after decades of uncertainty. The lighted candle reflects a beacon of hope for their return, alive or dead. The Bible represents the strength gained through faith to sustain us and those lost from our country founded as one nation under God. The glass is inverted, symbolizing the inability to share a toast. The chair remains empty as the veteran is missing, but not forgotten. May we have a moment of silence, please. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. We would now like to invite Earl Schroeder up to the podium to share with us a very special poem.
signed up, if you will, for some period of time to serve our countries and our country's defense. Now, we defend this country for what reason? The protection of our American flag, red, white, and blue. We have the stars and the stripes. That's in our national anthem. And uh, really proud that our flag flies high and with great honor. I'm going to read a poem today that can be addressed to both students and veterans alike because many of us have, uh, so to speak, lived through it. And um, I would like to have all the veterans to stand right now, turn around and wave at the audience so that you can see the mass that is sitting up in front. Of course, the lights aren't on, but you can believe they're there. Trust me. <laughs> Thank you, thank you very much. The poem that I selected was written some 20 years ago by a Navy fellow. He, uh, he called himself a cowboy poet, but uh, he wrote a lot of uh, military type patriotic uh, poems. And this one he wrote simply was called The Veteran. And it describes some of the things and effects that go through a person's mind before they become a veteran. And uh, with the light as it is, I will do my best. The first verse says, with my right hand raised, I solemnly swear. He swears to serve his country. He swears to give his life as he must. Be it the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, the Guards, the path that he chooses may lead to war the freedom that we hold so dear that make the enemies fear. They rule by force, their citizens oppressed, while here the people have the best. To speak in public without fear and to travel freely far and near and to vote for our leaders, win or lose, to worship God if they choose. We have a statue, Miss Liberty, she's called. She holds the torch for us all to see. A light that shines across land and sea. The ray of hope that says, be like me. A beacon to all who would alter the course. A curse to leaders who rule by force. And thus the conflict fosters and grows until the fuse is lit and glows. It's then that the ones who raise their right hand are said to fight in a far off land. It could be to some far off beach or a frozen world that's far from reach or in a plane that flying high but even there you still could die. A ship on an angry ocean sea, or a submarine you cannot see, and a river running brown with sand that is colored with red of blood. It could be to a foreign land that's even hot with blowing sand or possibly a jungle's heat where the moisture is the thing to beat. A place where an enemy looks like a friend and if you are fooled, it may be your end. From those who serve, there is a chance that you might just lose this dangerous dance. That's why we give to all who serve that honor and that they had the nerve. They raised their hand and said, I swear, regardless of the risk they bear. For those who raised their hand to serve, to pledge their life 
they had the nerve. Be it man or woman, it's all the same. Each can add veteran to their name. Written 20 years ago by a friend of mine, and I recite this many times throughout the year. I hope you appreciated the thoughts, veterans and students alike. I say thank you for the privilege of being here this morning. Thank you, Earl. This past week, the leadership students and I had the opportunity to sit down with a few of the VFW members and talk about their experiences and time serving our country. We compiled a few interviews to get more in depth about their takeaways and what they have learned after serving.
you know, my family, uh, I, we have a history of uh, military service. Uh, my dad was in uh, World War II, along with three of my uncles. My dad served in the Philippines and the uh, Pacific and uh, ended up in Germany and uh, fought in the, uh, the battle of the Bulls, one of the biggest battles in World War II in Germany. So that had a lot uh, for me to go into service when Vietnam broke out in, let's say, 1965, there are balance. Uh, I have two sons uh, that were both military, and my two brothers, one of which served in Vietnam. I uh, went in the service uh, in 1965 and spent three years in the service. I uh, did a couple of uh, uh, tours in Vietnam. I went to uh, Jones School as a paratrooper in the Cemetery Airport. And uh, yeah, I got, uh, I got shot up a couple of times over there. The last time was was nine months in the hospital, so it took a while to get over that one, but I still have shrapnel in my chest in this day from the first time I got hit. So, you know, if people only realize what, what this country is, I know uh, John Miller already touched on that, but this is the greatest nation in the world. The freedoms you have and experience with everybody is just, just an incredible thing. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. How was your experience in serving country Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. You know, I, uh, I, didn't, I didn't make uh, the military a career, uh, but it did shape me because I knew uh, when I got out of the service what I wanted to do career-wise, and I, was, I wanted to be a police officer. So I went to college, got an uh, associate's degree in criminal justice in uh, Salem, and I hired on with the uh, Marion County Sheriff's Office in uh, Marion County near Salem and uh, retired uh, from there once and then I went to Kaiser PD and uh, served uh, well a total of uh, 33 years in law enforcement. So I think the military shaped me. I was able to go to school, get uh, part of my education through the GI Bill. So you look at the benefits, uh, it's another good reason for especially the young people to uh, to look at that, if you uh, are so inclined to go in the military, there's a lot of benefits uh, open to you. Education being one of them. Sure. Um, next one, what's, what's one piece of advice you would want to give to the future generation? Yes, uh, like I touched on earlier, uh, this United States of America is, wasn't built on you know, people doing nothing. You look back at our history, you know, compare back to our forefathers. You know, they built this into the greatest nation on earth, and it still is today. Yeah, the United States has a lot of problems, but so does every other country. It's a worldwide pandemic right now, but some of the bizarre things are going on in this, in this world. But people have to step up, and to me, and uh, not, the military is not for everybody, but we have to have a strong military. And if we don't, we're going to be, there's a huge threat to be taken over. And I don't know what's going to happen down the road, nobody knows, but, you know, people have to, uh, to defend this country. And, you know, the only way you can really truly do that is uh, be a first responder, be a, be a uh, military uh, person, because we do need a strong military.
probably don't have much of a, of a conception of duty or honor or integrity of, or any of those things that uh, guys my age uh, hold near and dear to our hearts. But being in the military, you know, those are things that are emphasized and, and, and you are taught. And, uh, and I think that's you know, one of the big things that uh, I came away with after my time in the Air Force. And what is one piece of advice you want to get future generations? You know, this has been touched on before, and I hadn't really thought about it until uh, today. But, you know, just the sim simple fact that uh, the United States is probably, the, you know, the best country in the world to live in. And if you spend any time outside of the country, you, you know that to be true. So, you know, I think. Uh, an appreciation of the United States and all it stands for is something that uh, you know the younger generation should delve into and study and take to heart. Okay. Well, uh, I think that in serving the military, I learned two things right away. What a click was. It's not this, and uh, it's a measure of uh, distance in the military. And then, uh, having your sex, uh, which means uh, protecting. So um, I think that uh, a lot of people that uh, join the military and then come out have a different take on life itself. Uh, I think that for some, it will uh, give them a strengthening of their faith, whether it's in God or their country. And I think also that it gives you a sense of hope um, because um, for one thing, uh, those people uh, like myself served in Vietnam and later on, um, I do think that that feeling of uh, hope is, uh, is ingrained in you, that there is something else you know, out there besides things. <laughs> I met a lot of great people along the way, a lot of good friends. I still contact them. We exchange Christmas cards, things like that. Um, and uh, locally, we have uh, three uh, great groups. We have uh, the FW, which I'm a member of, American Legion, which I'm a member of, and Band of Brothers. And within those groups, we have uh, a lot of really good people. And uh, some of them have been interviewed for bits. It's been an experience uh, of uh, almost uh, a comradeship that you can't, you can't understand unless you serve and you know these people. Yeah. And what is one piece of advice you want to get future generations? Well, um, <clears throat> I was uh, in the military, I retired after 22 years from the Navy, and I will say if you're going to join the service, the Navy is the best service to join. Uh, they have everything. Uh, not to discount Air Force or Army or Coast Guard, um, but uh, if you're going to join, it's a great service. Uh, the other uh, thing is that uh, uh, don't be afraid to do that. Uh, if you think that would be a great career for you, talk to some veterans, and uh, I think they'll help you through something like that. Um, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a great thing to do. It, it really builds uh, your character. And uh, I think it really helps later on in life. Uh, for instance, I do know that all the veterans I know in town are great volunteers. Something I've noticed is starting to decline in the country. And, uh, but I need that I know volunteers for a lot of things. And, and uh, it will help you and help society too.
Our military is composed of Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine Corps, uh, Blue Dime Misc, and uh, Space Forces. And uh, we all work together as a team, yet we all work separately doing our different missions. And uh, it's quite a force to contend with. And it helps preserve the freedom that our country had since, uh, let's see, 248 years ago. I remember the day that I'd been in the service about six months and all of a sudden I found out that I had been shooting probably like 10 years and that it makes you a better person the rest of your life. Uh, you can appreciate what you have to do. You better be on time. I think the thing that it taught me was uh, I worked on one minute, two minute intervals when I was on duty and watching uh, aircraft who could possibly invade our country. And uh, even today, I operate almost on a stopwatch, one minute, two minutes. So it's carried with me my whole life. It's kind of weird, but it's worked for me. What is one piece of advice you want to give future generations? Many young people have grown up in this world with a single parent. Maybe, maybe it's no parent guidance. I think mostly all males should at least appreciate and experience about six months in what might be called a boot camp environment, learning how to shine a pair of shoes, learning how to uh, show up at work on time. It just plain teaches you to be a better and proud citizen of our country. Pay attention to details and uh, life will go on. It's been a joy to be in the, in the Air Force and uh, I do it again tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you all veterans from every branch for your service and attending our Veterans Day Assembly. Um, just a quick reminder to SHO students that we have our food drive going on for the month of November, and the winners of the food drive will get a dodgeball game and a hot cocoa bar. The blood drive is also next Monday. Sign up using the QR code or in the office. Thank you so much for coming, and remember, it's a great day to be an alum.